for this problem. Ready? All right, well, let's get ready. So for this problem, it's asking us to describe the transformation and then kind of sketch the graph. So a couple things we need to look at. Um, I really want to focus in on the stretching that's going on. But we do know that uh, if when we have our function, we have our f of x. And if we do anything to that f of x, if we do a minus um, you know, c, what that means is that's going to be a vertical shift downward. So we're actually going to be shifting our graph down 4. Four units. All right? So that was always like your plus or minus. Remember, whenever you have your function and you're adding or subtracting any kind of number, that's going to tell you if you're shifting up or down. And if we were going to do plus or minus inside of the function, that's going to tell us to shift our graph left or right. And remember, for right now, that's always going to be the opposite, right? If it's positive, it actually means you're going to be shifting to the left. And if that's a negative C, you're actually going to shift it to the right. So let's look at our next um, kind of transformation. This is going to be a, a non-rigid transformation. And what I mean by non-rigid is it's actually going to affect the shape of the graph. So what we look at is we have a, um, a number that's now multiplied by our x coordinate, our x value. So there's a couple things we need to look at. If we have f of x equals c times f of x, what this is going to do is this is going to, is going to give us a vertical either shrink or stretch. It's actually going to change the points. Now, if you guys remember when we're talking about functions, we have a function that has two coordinates. It has an x and it has an f of x. Very similar to our x and y. But we're going to be using our f of x as our output value. So when you're looking at this, if you're saying, all right, we're now going to multiply a constant times my output value, what's going to change that output value? So when we're looking at the graph, I don't even know what the graph looks like at this point. You know that now, if I'm multiplying by a number, if, it's, if that number is greater than 1, it's going to be a vertical stretch. Okay, so if I multiply by 2, think about, let's say, let's say your point is 1 comma 2. Well, if I multiply 2 times 2, now it's going to be 1 comma 4, right? You're stretching it. Whatever you multiply by, it's just going to be your multiplier. And then if C is less than or equal to 1, it's going to be a vertical shrink. Okay, so you guys have to understand when I'm multiplying a, a constant by my function, all right, that is going to change vertically the points. Okay, it's actually going to stretch or shrink your y coordinates or your output coordinates. Then there's another kind of stretch we have going on, which is f of x equals f of c of x. So now this is actually affecting the input values. So what do you think? So if it if when it affects the output values, you know, it's a vertical. When it affects the input, or when it affects the input, input, input values, thank you. When it affects the input values, it's now going to stretch it horizontally. And kind of like how we did, uh, you know, when you did your uh, horizontal shifts left and right, this is going to be the opposite as well. So um, when I'm looking at this, if C is greater than 1, that's actually going to be a horizontal shrink. And if C is less than, oh, I'm sorry, 0, C is less, C is greater than 0, but less than 1, that's going to be a horizontal stretch. All right, so you guys really got to make sure you remember just what's happening. And the easiest way I like to always think about it is just seeing, just look at what is your bat, what is your C doing? If it's multiplied by your function or your output value, then it's going to be something doing with the vertical stretch or shrink. And if you're multiplying it by your input value or your x, it's going to be doing something to the horizontal. So let's actually look at the graph. Hope you guys, you guys can all take a look at this online so then I don't have to worry about keeping it up here as long as erase it. Then let's look at the parent graph. The parent graph is your root function, square root of x. So hopefully at this time, 
we should have a rough sketch of what this looks like. And let's just pick a point that we want to use. Let's pick um, the point four, one, two, three, four. And we know that four, four, two, right? Because the square root of four gives you two, correct? Right? We're good with that, okay. Well, how about, um, let's say now we plug in, let's try to find this new graph. And if I plug in four, so I do f of four, square root of four, f of four equals two. Okay, that's weak point, that's four comma two. Well, if I do f of four for this function, that gives me the square root of two, which is gonna give me a rational number. I don't wanna try plotting that. But let's, let's pick a point, just for you know, plain sake, let's pick a point that actually uh, would work on this, okay? Let's pick uh, eight. So let's do f of eight equals square root of one half times eight minus four. Well now that's gonna give you four, square root of that is two. Um, that's gonna be two. Minus two is going to give you minus two, two is gonna be zero. So f of eight equals zero. And I probably should have, I didn't really wanna, let's actually hold off. Uh, I didn't really wanna explain exactly um, that point right there, but we know that this shift negative four is gonna take us down negative four. So we're gonna shift this whole graph down four. So one, two, three, four. Okay, because it says shift the graph down four. And then now my new point is at f of eight, um, it, you get zero. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. And it's kind of hard for me to show at least a, you know, a good root horizontal stretch, but hopefully you guys can see that these values, you know, these values are actually getting stretched out. Okay, I know I'm not the best grapher, but uh, if you guys can just remember when you're doing this, to make sure you pick values that are gonna make it easy to graph, to plot, and then also just follow um, your, uh, your shifts, everything, to go and find the points. So that's how you pretty much determine if it's a horizontal stretch or shrink or a vertical stretch or shrink, and then how to graph it. Any questions on that? Yes, Ashley. No questions? Okay. <laughs>